children of the coin. You may be thinking, what an unusual title for a message, and I would have to agree with you. However, today's message may be one of the most important messages you will hear in our current times and situation. First, let's read this short verse found in Genesis chapter 37, verse 26. Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brothering were content. Good morning, folks. I'm Troy Wilson. If this is your first worship service with us, welcome. If you've already become a part of our 10 minutes of weekly worship, welcome back and thank you for your continued support. Please remember to leave your prayer request in comments below or private message them to us. They will be prayed for by many. Neighbor, some of you will recognize the preceding verse coming from the story of Joseph and his brothers. Brothers who became jealous then sold him into slavery. But did you also notice how they were able to justify this evil ploy and sort of smooth their conscience by saying, let not our hand be upon him. Keep that thought in the back of your mind. Yet, they had no problem making their own brother a child of the coin. Let's read it in verse 28, same chapter, 37. Then there were passed by Midianites merchantmen, and they drew and lifted Joseph up out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph unto Egypt. I know some may be thinking, well, that is Old Testament stuff. It happened a long time ago. However, our children all across America are becoming children of the coin at an academic pace. A sad fact is this. Most people could care less unless it's their child or the child of someone they know. And then we see posts shared across social media, missing child, please help. Amen? No, it's true. That's the society we now live in. If it doesn't directly affect us, then it's none of our business, right? Uh, no, that would be wrong. I personally have spent many years in the field working alongside other child advocates to protect our children. I make it my business. Just as it seems, we are making some headway, then along comes some kind of setback. Laws to protect children are reversed, are overridden by new laws. Child sex offenders become eligible for early release as they now are in California. As of this past week, a child molester in the state of Illinois will not be required to post a cash bail. In the same state, a person who is arrested for child or human trafficking will be booked and immediately released back into society. Most trafficking victims in the United States are U.S. citizens. Now, many people assume the majority of trafficking victims in our country are, are undocumented immigrants, and that's probably, a lot of people probably don't care, but that's not true. They are U.S. citizens. 99% of victims trafficked for sexual exportation are women and little girls. No surprise to that. California consistently has the highest human trafficking rates in the United States with 1,570 last year. And that was just cases reported, my friend. Probably a lot more than that. The U.S. city where human trafficking is most reported per capita is Washington, D.C. Traffickers get their victims through the use of physical force, threats, psychological manipulation, and other tactics. Now listen to this. Human trafficking wasn't illegal in the USA, United States of America, until the year 2000 when the Trafficking Victims Protection Act was passed. And folks, that's because of people like you and me that advocated for it. The lawmakers wouldn't have never passed it, but they did, which made it a federal crime. For those of you 
who didn't think it was that big of a deal in our country, listen to this, from the Department of Justice and State Department. The United States, along with Mexico and the Philippines, is ranked number one in the world's worst places for human trafficking. Not Russia or China or some of these other countries. United States. In the U.S., we don't even keep an official statistic of human trafficking victims. Can you believe that? But it's estimated to be in the hundreds of thousands. Remember this just a year ago, 39 missing and endangered kids rescued in Georgia from Operation Not Forgotten. This operation to save children no longer exists. Folks, children of the coin is a billion dollar business in our country. And where there is money to be made, there are politicians to be had. Not all, but enough politicians to change the law in order to make children more vulnerable. Folks, it is impossible to tell a person who is confused about what sex they are from a pedophile or a person who is a human trafficking merchant. Under no circumstances is there an excuse for a born biological male to be in a public restroom with a little girl. If I hurt your feelings, then maybe I'm getting across today's intended message. In that, when it comes to protecting our children, I can care less about your feelings. I'm proud to say I have a track record to back that up. Listen to this. The FBI analysis of one particular website on Tor found that it hosted 1.3 billion images depicting children subjected to violent sexual abuse. This is just one website, and there are thousands out there depicting the exact same thing. An estimated 266 new ones coming online each day. Folks, that should tell you there's big money to be had in exploiting these little children. But yet our government is more concerned about the sensitivity of potential offenders than they are about protecting our children. Folks, this is real. Our children have become the children of the coin. Child pornography is an estimated $20 billion in the U.S. alone, over $100 billion worldwide. And some nuts think we need less law enforcement. You don't believe it? Congress passed a bill this week saying that. The George Floyd defund the police bill. You dummies. Remember, this is in the city, Washington, D.C., with the nation's highest rate of human trafficking. My friend, we as adults must make an extra effort to see to it that our children are protected. We need to stand together and let offenders, potential offenders, and those who protect these kind of people know they are the ones who are not welcome here. Amen. When it comes to protecting a child, we as Christians, we as citizens, need to get all up in other people's business when we suspect something is not right. Some of you may think, now, Brother Troy, I, I don't know if I agree with that. You may not agree with it now, but the day your child or a child or someone you know becomes a child of the corn, you will agree with me then. There is a saying, it takes a village. Let me quote it from Wikipedia, then I'm going to close. My, my blood pressure is getting high just thinking about this. It takes a village to raise a child is an African proverb that means an entire community of people must interact with children for those children to experience and grow in a safe and healthy environment. You know, I, I might be African-American. It, it sounds like it. My friend, if our children are going to stand a chance in today's society, it will take an exerted effort on all of our parts to ensure that happens. Let us pray. Father, we come to you today asking you to place your hand of protection upon our children. Dear God, we need you now more than ever to expose these people who are using children as a way to make money. 
You, God, have never intended these precious gifts to become property of those evil merchandisers. Thank you, Father, for all the blessings, and may we always serve in your will. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen.